pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and to the indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now you bow with me for a moment of silent prayer. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, today is a very busy day because we have our Thanksgiving dinner, and we're all very excited about that uh, because we have a lot of good food uh, prepared. And we will move right into the first item on the agenda, folks, is to uh, review in, uh, the minutes from the meeting on October uh, 26th. 2017. Oh, all right. Go ahead and make a motion to accept these minutes. All right, thank you. And I'll second. All right, thank you very much, folks. And all those in favor? All right, all right. thank you very much. And now we'll move in to approve the financial statements and the uh, treasurer's reports. Okay. All right, guys, I take that back. That first minutes that you read was from the October 17th meeting. And then the next set of minutes is from the October 26th meeting, the special meeting we had. Second. Okay. Any discussion? No? All right. All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. Now we get into the financial statements and the treasury reports. Karen and I ask a couple questions. Absolutely. Um, why do we have two overdraft charges? We're, that is probably overdraft where people wrote us bad yes, checks. It is. Okay. She had an yeah. ACH set up and her card got stolen, so she closed her bank account and it overdrafted. Okay. So it was paid though, she paid it. And the AT&T services? Yes. We're paying almost $700 a month? Yeah. That was well, those are our phone bills at all the lift stations yes. uh, for the alarms. Yeah. Oh. And, um, and that was probably a month before that too, uh, two of them. Okay. So it was a combination of like a month and a half in that one. It's not like that all the time. You have that on in general, don't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. I see.
Well, was it this month that Kenny went out and got a new part for that tractor? Yeah, and it should show up on uh, November. November. I'll go ahead and make the motion to accept these. Okay, fantastic. I'll second it. All right. And any discussion? Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We'll move right along to uh, Commissioner reports. And uh, in the absence of Commissioner Johnson, I will defer to uh, our Public Works Director Jim Hoskins to give us an update on how the wastewater is going. Well, basically, I'm the next final. Uh, the uh, over the people that pass weekend, as y'all know, we had uh, we ended up with uh, probably 240 gallon of uh, spigots. We got lucky. Uh, three out of four new stations when the power went out was calling and pumped down, so we had to time. But uh, one of them didn't. Uh, and uh, the other thing is we got our, our annual inspection report in. Uh, there's two things on that report that's on me. There's two PSS hits on it, which out of compliance. Uh, one is February, one is April. Uh, they're on me, but they're on God because we have a Tuesday, both, both instances, we have a Tuesday morning or Tuesday day, heavy rain, the Wednesday, Wednesday samples was full. The TSS is which is total spin solids. It's just stuff that you can't see in the water with the naked eye, but under microscope they can. We got hit twice last year. But other than that, samples for the year and everything was good. And then the other normal things that's been on there for a while, that's, that's on top of it. So, other than that, and, and pumps and generators. And, and you emailed me that, but I didn't get the attachment. Uh, the attachment of that report? I have a tape. Do you have it? Okay, yeah, because I got the email that said here's the report, but I didn't, the attachment wasn't there. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I forgot to say something to you about it. Okay, I'll uh, present it to you or you give me a Yeah, that, yeah, and we'll get it to you. Uh, uh, I, I just, I told you to you. Yeah. I thought the whole thing came. Right, that's okay. Uh, all right, thank you, Jim. All right, we will move right along to Commissioner Scott with the cemetery. I haven't heard anything bad. I've talked to Dave a couple times that he seems to think everything's under control, going well, but the dirt's piling up again. So yes. do we need more down at one of any of the we stations? We always use dirt down there. Uh, I did notice the piles getting rather large, but this time of the year it's probably going to be larger before it gets moved. Okay. Right. So we'll, we, we probably are going to plan on moving the excess dirt to the I think station. There's a lot of graves that need to be filled in too. There are. Can they sink during yeah. the winter time? But, to the weekend and but we will need to be thinking come spring, Jim. You think? Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, we'll probably not catch not catching that dry enough time to get in there without causing a lot of undue damage. Right. Uh, now, if it gets to be called up to where it's going to be an eyesore, which is probably even close to now, I can catch it halfway dry enough to just kind of level it out to where the dirt's still there, but it gives that eye appearance it's not. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. we could do and it, that area could use a little leveling yeah. out. Yeah. 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 If you also choose to do something like that, just collar dog and just first time we get a little dry time, we just knock it down. It don't have to be dry to, dry to do that. Right. And I love that idea of mm -hmm. spreading it out, kind of level it out back here. Yeah. Because it really needs and it. And so it goes down. down don't show back. No. No more. Right. Well, All right. That's pretty. Anything else? Yeah. Back to what? Anything else you got, Tammy, on that? No. That's all. All right. I will say that I got a bid on the water, or the, the we did the water line, uh, on the road to go through there. The road would be, that would be coming off of McDowell and running to Equity Drive. Uh, that was one we talked about. It's gonna be about 600 feet long, 15 feet wide, six inches deep, using dense grade gravel uh, for $10,768 that we can have done in the next two to three weeks. 
And that's up next to the tree. To the line, yeah, the, the property line or the fence line. And uh, something that Tammy and I had talked earlier, there are uh, trail grants and things like that out there that, that I would like to pursue. I know the city's got to pay up front, whether we get a grant or not. The city's going to have to pay up front. But I would like to try uh, for one of these trail grants to help us pay for that because it is going to be a walking trail that people will utilize coming from town to go to the library. And that, and that hopefully, uh, ideally, it would uh, keep less children out on 42 uh, because there are so many. And, and you all, we've talked about this sidewalk situation to go in front of the cemetery is really a mute point. So putting a road in behind the cemetery, which we're going to need it anyway, uh, is I think a step in the right direction. What do you all think? Can we get it cheaper than that? Like, do we have to get gravel? Can we get something else like pavement? It's going to last longer. I, I'm not opposed to pavement, but that would probably triple the like price. Long when we mow and everything. Right. It this will be okay. The gravel, it's going to have a fabric down, which is one of the biggest things, so the grass doesn't grow up in it. And then, sometime in the future, maybe. Uh, you know, you stay in this politics long enough, maybe it'll be you that paves it. But I wouldn't anticipate paving it uh, in probably in the next 20 years. Well, I'm just thinking about with it being there and gravel, if people are traveling on it more, right. it's going to get little holes and ditches and then we have to continue to fill it in and all that. That's that's good points and that's something we'll have to keep watching. The only thing I may do that is, it won't be maintenance free by no means, you're right. But using the geotech fabric underneath of it, it's not like a putting it out to the farm. The geotech fabric, I, I'm getting off subject, but I have actually laid that down on wet ground like right now and drove my load of my truck so the top of it can help. Now you know, spin like this and it will hold you up. Hmm. It's pretty thick, pretty good stuff. It, it, it's good stuff and it, it will minimize your maintenance, but it won't be totally maintenance free. He is right about that. Right. But it's probably not what he's saying. Right, the gravel's not going to go into the grass where we got to worry about hitting it with the mower. That's the big thing. Mm. That, uh, That's for food. <laughs> yeah, we will. And it would come out of the cemetery money. That's going to cut it pretty. That that is going to cut it pretty good. Push it down, isn't it? Pretty yeah, good. It is. Well, that that's going to cut that account. You don't you don't see the CDs on the treasurer's report, uh, and the goal would be to get that grant and at least you know try to recoup eighty percent of it. And I'm just going to ask Joanne. You think that's something that you could? Yeah, work I, I was going to. I, I didn't know if this was. <coughs> Good time to talk, but who, where, what organization, where do these grants, where do The ones that uh, Tammy had seen and, and she showed them to me was uh, through the USDA. Okay. Right. So you had mentioned that. Community Development Block Grant, one of those CDBGs. Yeah. And there's a lot of information on that website. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look at that and see what I can find out. That's awesome. I'll let you know. Awesome. But he wants a decision today. Yes, so that he can schedule us for two to three weeks. Mm. I'm surprised he's that quick. Right, that is very quick because he's got a lot of stuff going on, yeah. and uh, and Wayne's going to dictate a lot of that. It, 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 it is. Be week next week come out, so. Right. So you have an estimation of what it's going to cost or anything? Yes. He's got ten thousand seven hundred sixty-eight. And he thinks he can have it done in two to three weeks, weather permitting, of course. Uh, but the big thing is, I really want people off of Highway 42. My big thing is, they're walking from town to go to the library, and if we can get them off of 42 for a piece, maybe from uh, Pendleton Avenue to Equity Drive, that's a, that's a pretty good stretch that there would be less kids walking on the street. And uh, especially with it getting darker earlier, 
Uh, and these kids are, are walking. There's, of course, they won't skateboard on gravel, but uh, that will keep them off 42. And that, that's my goal. That's the target. If we can get more foot traffic and less, you know, back on that back road. It'll be I don't want them going back there and doing the, some of the things that some right. of them They'll are doing now. Mowing. Yeah, right. And that was another issue there, you know, along that fence and, and this price is uh, there's so many trees along that fence line. I would like to save some of the bigger ones and get rid of the bush, the little, the little scrappy stuff. Uh, so it's a cleaned out fence line and, and there's some nice cedar trees in there that look good. Uh, but if we can get rid of that little uh, straggly stuff so that it's, it's, uh, there's more visibility. Uh, you know, on the walk back through there, kind of keep it wide open. And it won't be long. Uh, you know, I'm I'm confident to say that we'll be burying people in that new part of the cemetery uh, within two years. And that is that is based on uh, the amount of graves that we have available in the other part of the cemetery uh, and then the, the way of the ground. Like, you talked about leveling that ground out. There's so much of that uh, underneath is so many, it's full of springs. And personally, I don't, I don't want to sell graves to people that I know there's springs running in there. So that, that limits how many graves we have left in the old section of the cemetery. I don't want a, a situation where uh, we're burying people's loved ones and that they're getting uh, flooded. I don't, I don't want to get into that. I need to uh, yeah, Well, well we what worries me is I'd kind of like to get a feel of the grant and see if we might be able to get it before we put all that, put that right. money into it and then find out we're not eligible and then... Very right. Well, I mean, and it, the truth is we need that road. That's the thing. That, that's the thing. That's not going to change. One thing, they're, they're already driving back to people. You haven't had the pleasure of mowing it here the last few times. You have missed out. You have missed immensely. out. Because he's getting rid of that pretty bad and people driving through there anyway. Right. And thank you for that point, Jim, because mowing that cemetery or that new part is is a pain in the butt because of the the uh, ruts that people just drive wherever because there's no road. They just figure, well, I can just it's a field, I can just drive right through it. And uh, no matter what way you mow, if you're going this way or this way or this way, you're gonna you're gonna bump bump. Jim's mowed it. Jim's mowed it. One thing, Doc, I'm gonna throw in here. I mean, you know, Susan, if you do all do do that, where your building is now, mm -hmm. you was talking about that dumpster pad over here. You've been yes. talking about for quite some time. Yes. Have your contractor dump his materials there. He's got to dump them somewhere yeah. to re-pick them back up. Yeah. And that will make a pretty good pad for your concrete. Yes. For that dumpster to go over there. Yes, it will. So That's a very good idea. If you do decide to do it, indirectly tie the two jobs together, you're going to save yourself money. Right. And that, and we all want to move that dumpster, uh, you know, as best we can. We also need to buy some markers for the sections of the cemetery in the rows, yes, thank you. which is it's probably going to be minimal. I don't look for them to call, you know, they should just Two like three hundred dollars a piece. There's, oh, there's no, 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 just like metal. Yeah, something that can be mowed, picked up and mowed around. Right. Like little poles. Okay. Yeah, like if there were reflectors that have section A. Section yes. B. Right. Now the section signs maybe should be a little taller. Right. But as far as the row signs, they could just be like the little reflector signs. Right. I'm saying 150 bucks max. For all of them. Yeah. yeah. I may be way off, but I mean nothing elaborate, maybe just nothing. kind of markers. So. Well, but, and where the expense comes in, is what is the longevity of them? I think if we're going to spend money, we might as well go big and get them that are going to last 50 years, if that's possible. 
I'll look into those yeah. and bring well, something can change to change within 50 years. So you don't want them to last, just get like disposable ones. Like, you know, the signs that people put up in their yard? Yeah. Like, vote for whoever. Yeah. Just get something like that, and then it's easily moved. Mm -hmm. I mean, they last a while, so, and they're cheap. I'll look at some options yeah. before there the next go. meeting. There you go. See what I can come up with. All right, sounds good. All right, so how do you all want to act on the road? Do you want to act on the road? He needs it today. He needs an answer, for sure. I'll say we go to make a motion. I'll go to make a motion to accept it. Okay. Oh, I ain't spending money. <laughs> well, taxi pretty good, eh? <laughs> I wouldn't think of it as spending as much as if we are investing. Well, like, it could change. It could go up more. It's dead. That's, so, that's a fact. Yes, that's a fact. Yeah, those are, those, this is a uh, this is a thirty day bid. So you're right. It could go up. On the basis that we will actively pursue a grant. Yes. I will second it. Yes. But I want it. I'm, I'm seconding it only. There's your get the rent. And then that's. That is a have to situation. Yeah. Uh, and, and because I don't want to bust open one of those CDs. You know, I'm thinking of his generation that's going to yeah. need that, that's going to need that money. Uh, and there's a lot of things that we need to, to do that cost money. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's, it's one of those things. All right. Do we have any more discussion on this guys? We have a motion in a second. Well, Joanne's here, and we'll get to that shortly, but yes, like I said, I, I really want to dig into some of the grants that we'll be able to apply for this, so many. this bill as so quick many. as possible. Should we try to get the grant first, like we was talking about? No, because it's, a, it's reimbursement grants. It's too long. Yeah, it's reimbursement grants. We have to pay up front, and then they give oh, money, okay. got money back to us. Okay. Yeah, and unfortunately. Where you get money up for us, now. Yeah, that that's those all, days are. That's all right. pretty. Yeah, those they want to they, they want to see our investment. They want to see yeah. our yeah. investment. They want to see if you're going to do something. Yeah, yeah, we. Okay. We're gonna wish on a star. All right, uh, I will move to uh, Commissioner John. Do we have anything for the streets and sidewalks? Do we need to vote on all those? Oh favor. yes, yes, all those in favor. Thank you. I thought I had to vote. Thank you very much. Well, the streets are looking pretty good. They're holding up really well. Uh, my only concern is this winter with the salt. We, Jim, do we have enough salt? No. Do you know? Yeah. What? The salt. Are we well equipped for winter? <laughs> are we all equipped for winter with salt and everything? You, you ain't got much salt. So we need more salt? No, we had some left over from last year. Well, we and then we need to build that down yeah, for the salt to go. Well, we could probably handle there. two snowstorms and we're going to be out. Where do we store that at? In the wrong spot. Yeah. Uh, what, and what we have in bags is stored inside down there. Bags are a pain in my butt. Yes, they are. And they're dangerous. I hate them, but I don't think we've got a choice. We waited too long. Jim, uh, what, uh, how big of a concrete pad do you think that is that we need to, bi to build down there for a lean to where we can buy salt again at the auction in the spring? If you built like a 12 by 16 shed, mm -hmm. you would have enough. If you're just going to build a pad and cover it over, you need something half the size of this room right. because it just runs. Right. If you've got a shed where you can pile it up, if you uh, notice Milton or Kelton, either one, right. there's a real tall shed. Well, there's salts like up here. Yeah. It's not running everywhere. Well, we need to have room to get that front loader in. Yeah, all you got to do is have enough room to get the front loader in and load it. Uh, what We've you got a smaller version of what the state has. It's like a tent mm -hmm. type. Yeah, those are nice. Yeah, those are yeah. expensive. Any, anything. They're expensive. Nice. Yeah, yeah they're they nice. Hook barns. But what you would save on pouring the concrete pad to throw a tarp on it 
was paid for putting the building up. Right. So that's going forward to talk about your summer. How much will you lose for evaporation and make summer on that? If you put it on the ground? Yeah. All, all of it. it. I mean, what you were talking about. Will that preserve all of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shoot, yeah. Yeah, it, it's sitting on concrete. Okay. It's not going all right. I just don't well, since we missed the option. Heat more, sir. No. Right, because they're in the spring. Well, yeah. we need to decide before the spring that we're going to do this and and go to the auction and buy a ball. Yeah, so before, before spring, we need to be really ready yeah. if you, to spend that money to, to build us. If you get a shed, Todd can go online on that reverse auction thing and buy that, which I ain't kicking a dead horse, but in August, I told you where to buy saw. It's half the price, it was half the price in August that it is now. So we're going to bite the bullet this year. But if you go ahead and do with that, come next summer, Todd hits online, they automatically sell it to you. Yeah. February is when it starts. Mm -hmm. Well, very, we need very, to take care of that. It's very easy. But I, I knew last February there was no sense in doing it if we don't have a concrete pad in the building. And I'm just going to guess at a number of uh, five or $6,000 for the concrete in the building. I mean, I'm just. But if we have the building, we don't need the concrete, correct? Oh, yeah, you need the foundation for the yeah. building. Yeah. The, <laughs> the ground is what took all the salt away on us this time. Just right. Just at a very fast rate. Yeah. In, in fact, I mean, I was kicking on Todd for doing it, and I it, it went away a lot faster than I anticipated. It didn't. Mind. So. <laughs> I didn't think it would go that fast either. And and also last winter, what did we use any of it? Yeah, we uh, wasn't much. Yeah, we probably loaded three loads out there. All right. Yeah, that's not much. Not much at all. We didn't have two inches of snow. All right, very little. And we're thankful for that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, we do need to still be prepared. So we probably should uh, order us a uh, couple more pallets, at least to get us through this winter, get us started. And, uh, you know, you got a muscle guy there. He'll be able to jump up there and help uh, load those a little bit. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Two, at 2 a.m.? I'll be at work. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get it loaded it's up. It's amazing you work 24 hours a day, John. I work, <laughs> I work third shift. It pays for college. It's good. But to answer your question, other than salt, the truck, the sprayer, everything else. Yeah, yeah um, we're, we're, we're ready to rock. Animal salt. Yeah. Well, we'll get it. All right. Uh, and then we'll go to Commissioner Green with the sanitation. Yeah, I talked to the gentleman on the truck this morning. He was doing the work, and he said everything running fine. Good. Good to hear it. Good to hear it. With the sanitation, uh, I think we need to work on a contract with Frumkey okay. about getting two drivers, well not two drivers, but two people doing it. Okay. Because sometimes when I come through in the morning, when I get off work, it's just the one guy and then there's a huge line of traffic because it's just one guy. And he, he's, he's running and everything. And I think we need to work on a contract saying, hey, we need two people out there, a two-person job, so that way it gets things done. That's something that we will... It, to, uh, it did have two people one time. Or, yeah. And, and like Jennifer uh, said, what, what uh, happened, they, are, they have a hard time keeping help. Yeah, I'd and, say uh, so. And that extra position is That's called hard. a uh, tipper. And uh, those people will work a day or two and, and yeah. they quit. Right. And uh, but that is something that we can bring up with with Rumpke, uh as we get into the bidding contract. Well, that's probably something you can call for safety. Right? Or yeah, yeah. Like and just that. say, hey, we need yeah. a guy. Or lower rates. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I mean, if it's going to take forever for him to get the trash, get it to only one guy, and lower the rates. I'll make I'll make a call and see what they can do for us. Uh, call Rumpke. All right, uh, Jennifer, you want to give us an update on the sewer? Everything's going uh, good. Building? Um, they've got almost everything in. Uh, we'll have another meeting today, but we're we'll going to push it off to later. Um, but everything's good. I don't have an exact timeline yet, but hopefully. They're getting all the information and everything. They've got all the data and all the everything that they need now. We're just putting it in the system, putting it in you know, the customers and their balance, and from there, I'm so excited. <laughs> And, and on that, uh, we got our postage meter. Yes. Uh, Good. 
and uh, we are we are highly anticipating that our December bills will go out with our new utility billing software. And, and that, that'll add the that will the include extra. the the uh, the new charge for the, uh, the water meter readings. Um, and uh, and the trash mm -hmm. that will include both of those uh, uh, small increases. All right, uh, the next one, guys. Uh, we had a gentleman uh, speak to Jennifer, and uh, Jennifer, please jump in anytime about working on our video surveillance equipment here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have decent video surveillance equipment. Uh, but this gentleman is very skilled in it. He can kind of fix what we have and then add to what we have uh, so that we have more more coverage of this building. It's it's not only good for when we're not here, but it's good for when people are here. Should, the, should an injury come up or uh, someone break in, it's nice to have that video footage to see who, what, and how, and when. Uh, and if you all are uh, interested in doing this, we will have the gentleman at our next meeting to kind of outline what he's going to do. But I wanted to see if you all were in favor of at least moving forward on it. Okay. So did he get a city many numbers? Yes. Yeah, he did. He said uh, he could do all of it for a thousand. And that's doing our computers and the software. Or even storage, like the mobile system, and then the surveillance camera that's using the existing cameras and adding like three more cameras. Well, have him come and talk to us. Okay. Good. Hard to talk, don't we? Yeah, very good. All right, and the next one, uh, guys. Uh, have you met Joanne, John? Nice to meet you. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to vote on John, Joanne. Uh, as you all know, Amy uh, Eversall uh, moved on to another law firm, and she practices now in, in uh, Indiana. So we are in need of an attorney. And uh, I was very fortunate to find Joanne, and she is a Bedford resident. She lives out on uh, Mount Pleasant Road, and uh, she is an assistant county attorney in Jefferson County, and uh, I was just really impressed with her resume and impressed with uh, the conversation that we had. Uh, and I, I would like to move forward with hiring her. Uh, and to do that, we need to pass a resolution that uh, I will read to you guys. Whereas it is the duty of the city commission to hire a city attorney for the purposes of rendering legal services on behalf of that legislative body and whereas it is determined that an agreement for professional services for Joanne Pitch should be authorized to acquire her services as city attorney from November 17th or November 21st through June 30th, 2018. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of Bedford that the mayor is authorized to enter into an agreement for professional services with Joanne Pitch to provide legal services as city attorney from November 21st to June 30th, 2018. I spoke with Joanne as well. We, I came up and met her and we talked and she's... I talked to her outside. <laughs> she's willing to go through our... Uh, ordinances and procedures and help us get those up to date revised and up to date and as well as helping with the enforcement ordinances the nuisance ordinance and going forward into because we've got some properties we're getting no responses on and that needs to be addressed possibly legally and so i think she'd be a good fit and being here a bedford residence has a vested interest So I'll make a motion to go with that. I'll Good second. Idea. Either one. All right. And any discussion? I see. All right. And all those in favor? Aye. 
All right, thank you very much, folks. I will get that uh, contract signed, and uh, we will, as you see, Joanne's already at the job. <coughs> there you are. All right, the last thing on the agenda for today, guys, is our Thanksgiving feast, uh, which is this evening. Uh, Tammy has been in there cooking, Jennifer's been cooking, and... Uh, Harold's going to help with the gravy later. There you go. Uh, so we, we hope to have a good attendance. It starts at 5.30. So we hope to have a good attendance. And I have one more thing before we right. close. That's fine. Could you, would you mind leaving us for a minute? Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And Jim, you go too. Please go with her. Don't come back. <laughs> Shut up, man. Let's go black green <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Okay. We had a, at our last meeting we did the personnel policies and talked about vacations and vacations not rolling over and time off not rolling over. I felt kind of bad about Jennifer because this year she has not had a chance to take a week's vacation because we had, didn't have anybody to cover the office. And I feel bad that we give that to her, then it's here it is at the end of the year and she hadn't had a chance to take it. I was thinking this year if we would possibly either let her pay her for that week or if we could but it's almost too late in the year. But perhaps just this year pay her that week that she wasn't able to take. And then next year try to make arrangements to get somebody in here for that week. Yeah. That way she could take her time off. Right. But actually this year, I don't think there was, we didn't supply a way for her to take off unless we just wanted to shut the office. But I want me to spend time in here. I yeah, really we don't, don't want that to happen. I really so, don't like it. Whether you want it or not, I don't like it. So, I mean, it's just this year since we just changed that as vacation not rolling over. But I just feel bad that somebody had that coming to them and it's just going to go away. And we just made that decision, well, you know, last month. It's just put in the policy that if they don't take the vacation, then we pay them for a week of vacation anyway. So that way, if they want to work, they still can, because not everybody wants to take a vacation. Well, and okay, I get that. I get yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, but then people won't take the vacation, mm -hmm. so we'll pay. And my issue there is they burn out. Yeah, you everybody can, needs a, uh, at least I, a week I, off. I, that's the whole idea, is they need to, that's why I wanted to put in there that it ends at December 31st. If you don't use it, you lose it, because I really, I'm all about getting people out. Yeah. Get in any more. And then we then we'll starting in January we'll have a whole year to find somebody that, you know, we could say That's right. we'll pay you this week to come in and set and have them come in and set with Jennifer, let her know what the basics of what they would need to do to give her that chance. Yeah, right. And and be thinking about who that is. Right. Because this is gonna need to be somebody who can come in here and learn it, first of all, and then be flexible. Right. That that's that is the big thing. And right. it would only be that one week, right. so or whatever her vacation. Weeks, whatever we had people in here. I don't know what what's happened. Mm -hmm. We had people in here one time. Know what happened? Yes, what? we had Cindy and Rita. Yeah. We had Joyce and Rita, yeah. uh, and it was great. So we just need to bring another person here. Yeah. And yeah. for nothing more than just to cover that vacation, yeah. you know, or right. if she gets right. sick and it's a day that we have right. to have somebody. Yeah. Right, that's right. But I don't want to go against that ordinance, but since we just passed that last month, I think it's only fair that, you know, right here at Christmas time and been a whole yeah. year that we right. just... And, no and what we'll do is no uh, we will have a special meeting to amend those personnel policies so that it's in the policy. Uh, and then we can... We can alter it after that. We can do another uh, resolution again. Uh, municipal order, the way we change them. It's an easy fix. And I'm glad you remembered it because I forgot. So. Because that reminds me of something else. I'd like to make a motion that we just pay her that week of vacation for this year and yeah. then we'll amend the policy or proceed. Yes. I'll Ordinance. Okay. I'll All right. All right. Any discussion? 
Joe. Anything? All right. All those in favor? All right. All right. All passed. Thank you. All right. The next thing that I, and I'm glad you reminded me of that because it's Christmas. And uh, now that they're gone, uh, traditionally we have given them gift cards or something like that. And last year we had a Christmas uh, dinner with the commissioners and the city employees over at Butler. I don't remember if Harold made it. I don't believe he did. But it was with the commissioner's wives, your husband, of course, and John, if you wanted to bring a date, uh, and Joanne. But we all met at a dinner place. Uh, Milton meets, their city of Milton is having their Christmas dinner at Harry Stone yeah, Grill or something there. like that. Uh, how do you all feel about that? Do you want to have a little Christmas get together? We all go meet somewhere and have like dinner. Like or something? Whatever you all want to do. I don't care yep. for Longhorn. But Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> That's a long way to go. It, it is. is. It is. It it is. Good. But Gen General yeah. Butler has Fourth a nice drive. It is. But General Butler has a very nice buffet. Uh, that's where we did last year. But then again, it is uh, up to you all because I don't care. Either way. I'm happy. We well, used to have a good attendance in here for a little Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. People come, it's pretty close and everything. Oh. Well, and I, I, I don't want to sound exclusive, but it kind of is. Uh, this is for the city people, for the, the commissioners, for the attorney, for the, the workers. Uh, because we do have Erica, we have Jim, Jennifer, and Jordan. Uh, this is this is something for you all. And I really, uh, it really doesn't matter to me where you all want to do it. So that part we can talk up later. But I think the decision to do or not to do is what we should discuss, should decide on. And we do have light up bed coming up, and there will be a crowd for that. Well, I'll say we definitely do it. Okay. That'll work. Well, you'll have, how about you decide on the date since you probably have more commitments than the rest of us. I work third shift, so as long as I'm able to be there, by whatever. You're only time. working third, you don't work at. I work at Sunday at the day. McDonald's. Hello. And sometimes you out there, don't you? Well, we're going to have to have a special meeting, correct? Yes, we are. So, so let's. So we can, so we decide we can be thinking about the date and the day. Then do we also give the employees a gift card as well? Uh, if you want to, I think so. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah, sure. And we got two part-time, two full-time. Mm -hmm. Make the part-time less than the yeah. full-time. Yes. And then we can we all have that amount. If that's all of them coming to the dinner as yes, well? Yes, okay. absolutely. That'll be the deal if they want a gift card. You know. But we want to take care of Jennifer and Jim, and Jim since they're the full-time. And, and uh, yeah, I think it'll be something nice. And it's nice for us commissioners to get together and have us a nice dinner too. Meet the spouses. And, yes, and our attorney to come with us. All right, so we'll plan on those dates and places. And that'll and be the part of the special meeting when we yep. do our yep. All right, anything else, folks? I think I'm good. I have the girls in the back from the Historical Society. What would you girls? <laughs> What would you like to bring up for us? The Cemetery Preservation Committee for the Historical Society of Christian Law. We had a mere call and a conversation about unmarked veterans' graves in the Bedford Cemetery. And um, just to let you know, we've got three stones already ordered. They'll be here within the next five weeks. However, um, we're struggling to try and find out where exactly they're buried because of the older side of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So um, we were wondering if there was a place where we could do more of a memorial yeah. instead of on the grave itself if we can't find the graves. Mm -hmm. And um, if there could be a place designated in the cemetery for just for these veterans, there will be more, I promise you, as we go On the older records. side? Is that where you want right. to? Um, as we go through the records and um, try to find where they're buried, um, a lot of them were buried prior to 1920. So, um, 
that if I've been through the books looking for them and I have not been able to find them yet. Right. <laughs> so um, I think it's going to be one of those things where we leave it up to you what you would like to do. The stones that the VA will send us don't cost anything. They are free. They both weigh 240 pounds a piece. They are the upright granite stones. Um, if they are union, they will have a shield on them and raised lettering. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much the black flat lettering on them. Uh, they require 16 inches of depth to be uh, placed with um, actually 18 inches because you have to love two inches for gravel and drainage. And um, we have, our people know how to do this. We've been doing it on Creek for the past few months and uh, resetting the Point Creek Cemetery. And we have a member of our committee, his name is Richard Bedwell. He designed the CSA Bardstown uh, Cemetery in 2001. And, uh, he has very good expertise in what we do. He also happens to be my cousin. And he lives in Crestwood, but he's a member of our society. And he has been helping us with Corn Creek. He is also our link to the VA. He worked for the VA for 30 years. Okay. So he comes with great expertise. But we'll lay that out to you. And right. See if you want to chew on that for a while. Um, well, those stones are going to be in pretty soon. The stones will be here probably by Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know what we and they will be delivered here, mm -hmm. so you need a safe place for them. And they bring right. them in these big, huge. Uh, they bring them in crates, and uh, they will call you before they deliver them, okay. which is nice of them. Yes. And um, if you can just store them, decide where you want them. Let right. us know, and we'll go out on it for you. Yeah. And I think what we'll do is when they call, we'll have them meet us at the cemetery. So Maybe they, Dave could give us an idea where there would be a right. night, because he takes care of of mowing and the maintenance at right. So maybe he has an idea where it'd be. And I'm thinking near the gazebo. Oh, they want it in the old section. I, I don't think it matters, does it? You know, the older side, I don't know if you've driven through there lately, but it looks like somebody took a baseball bat to three quarters of the graves over there recently. I don't know if that was when That's or what it was. Yeah. But well, we did have some of that. The monuments have been falling and the ground is really, really unstable. Yeah. Right now. I've got a couple of relatives buried over there and we're going to have to go reset their monuments too. Um, but a lot of them are down, and it's because ground, wind, water, things shift. Nature, yeah. Nature does its thing. And uh, if you wanted it on the other side of the cemetery, we could, we, you know, we could make a veterans memorial garden out of that area, make it pretty. Mm -hmm. I don't think the historical society would want to do that with they own it. Well, and what I'm thinking about is that back to that. Uh, that part of the cemetery near the gazebo where we have a lot of spring activity under the ground mm -hmm. and if we know these are just going to be memorials there's not going to be any burials there uh, I think that would make it look nice and then we're not worried about uh, burying someone there down down the road and we should probably move the flagpole back to absolutely to that area as well. it solve a lot of problems because but I think, I don't know if, if Jennifer's told you, Tammy, but I've been here about once a week going through the books, looking for unmarked veterans' graves, and unmarked graves in general, and then I've been going on find a grave, and I've been going down all the lists of all the unmarked graves that are older, mm -hmm. okay, but I've, I'm keeping a log on that. We're finding way too many. Yeah. Way too many that I knew because probably are in the And, um, you know, if that's the case, then if there is a complication and somebody can't find a member of your family or something like that, and they would like to have some form of memorial for it, you would have the space designated for that. All right. 
Yeah, so there, there's something for us to be, to have ready. Or you could actually, or you, if you wanted to, you could actually put in a cremation garden. Yeah, that is coming. Okay. It's uh, like a mausoleum. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's in the works. Uh, but that's a ways off, too. Is something to chew on between now and when they get here? Absolutely. Well, that'll, that'll, that'll be a discussion that, that uh, is necessary, you know, so we can get, get this done. And we thank you for what you are yes. doing. Oh, thank you well, for letting us do it. We're, we're having a ball. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> love what you do, right? Well, it's, we've got 12 people out there that love doing this. Right. Um, well, we're very grateful. They do want to do, um, we are talking about putting in a, I don't know, because I don't think they do it anymore, is a uh, flag program for the veterans on Memorial and Veterans. Yes. And that will be very nice come spring. Very nice. All right. Does anyone have anyone else? Anything else? What day do we want to have the special meeting? You let us know. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And I'll yeah I'll get with you, Tammy, and we'll look at the calendars and stuff. And you and Harold, John, will Joanne, will all work a date out for so the special meetings. Um, if it tends it's going to be around when? Maybe. When would you say? Uh, what? What do you for, mean? For the special meeting, like yeah, it'd probably be a six o'clock meeting. December. Yes. First week like, of December, yeah, maybe. First or, or second week of December. Well, six o'clock meetings. I have classes and I'm having finals. Okay, so you need like so a Tuesday. So it's gonna have to be on a Tuesday. Okay. All right. Thank you. And what else was gonna be on that special meeting? Um, About the. Uh, the ordinance. Yeah. The personnel. Yeah, personnel policies, changing the uh, municipal. Um, we could, I could maybe give an update on, you know, start looking at the uh, uh, block grant thing. Okay. And I can leave the data on the agenda okay. for the special meeting. That'll work. Fabulous. Okay. All right. So, do I have a motion to adjourn? You do. I'll make that motion. Thank you, John. He's got to get to making graces. Yeah, that's right. And we have a second. I'll second. And all those in Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Very, very fruitful.